Hello, dear friend, Thomas Manton IV. I had a startling revelation about an hour ago, and uh, it is phenomenal. And I'm going to begin a new series and a new book on this. Um, the intimacy with God that I did in two volumes was brilliant, and uh, I want to leave that where that's at right now. Um, because the Lord spoke to me and preempted this splendiferous broadcast <laughs> with something new, and I want to speak on the subject of confidence. I believe it's our greatest weapon. I believe it's the uh, unalluded to a miracle in motion that causes everything to happen. And before I say the definition and some notes that I've uh, typed on this, I want to say this. I heard a multi-billionaire say this, <clears throat> and a man that's helped people in different industries. He said the number, this is, pe pe this is people that are doing big business in the world's order. Now, he said, now, listen to this, because cause it, comes, it all comes from God. But he said that the number one ingredient in success is self esteem good self esteem and self and confidence and uh we we need to understand that the lord is uh is just the author of all of that now confidence has to do with trust a trust factor the devil is the nemesis or the antithesis or the the antichrist you know of anything good that's of Christ, which is also a good, healthy self-esteem, self-image, self-confidence, um, you know, uh, wonderful way of looking at things and doing things and seeing yourself and seeing others and seeing God and all of that. Now listen, think about it. If God has a plan for you and he wants you to trust him Trust certain people, not everybody, and really get on with the program. What's the devil going to do? He's going to try to break your trust in people in God. Maybe he can't succeed in that. Hopefully, he can't. He shouldn't be able to. And trust in people, and trust in even yourself. I talked about this post-traumatic uh, stress disorder (PTSD) that when people have been shell shocked by Warfare, betrayals, lies, you know, setups, thefts, and even things that like wrong decisions you made, wrong people that you trusted, uh, things that you, you missed things along the way. It caused your whole realm of progress to get messed up. One of the ways you're going to get it all back, I was having a conversation with a dear uh, friend of mine who's a brilliant strategist. He may be trying to call me back now, but I'm live on the air. I'll talk to him after. He has a also, he's going live on the air soon in his own uh, media ministry. And he, uh, he said time and territory, you, you get, it gets lost through certain things. You know, and that sounds like, you know, monumental, but it's also mild when you think about things that have happened to you that cause you to be ripped off, stolen from, m abused, you know, distracted, delayed, derailed, denied, devastated, you know. And uh, these uh, things come from hell to try to divert you from the divine mission. So one of the benefits of revelation by the, from the Holy Spirit showing you things is to get you to um, get back on track, but you need to have great confidence. Can I tell you, if you don't believe in yourself or your position, no one else can believe you because the inner vibe goes out from you and causes an outer thing in your atmosphere. You ever see people that look all like they're tripping over themselves, they're all insecure and nervous, and the Lord spoke to me one day and said, this person's been abused, this person's really been messed up. They didn't have affirmation from their own father. They didn't have great affirmation in their atmosphere, and they just survived being kind of, of a lonely duck, you know, swimming around in circles in the pond of life. Small pond, not big ocean, you know, you know the, notice the, how carefully I chose my words there. And they just didn't, um, 
get on to anything great. They're all messed up in the wrong environment. You know what someone like that needs? Needs a person who really cares, who can really see. Grab them by the head and shake them loose and, ca- and scream at that devil and cast the devil out of them. Off of them, out of them, out of their mind, out of their subconscious, out of their emotions, out of their woundedness, and begin to like put some anointing power in them. And I'm doing that right now by speaking to you. And shake off all that garbage, get it all out of you, and move on in the mission that God's called you to do. Do you know how many thousands of people God spoke to me about today that need this? Do you know how many, even millions of people that need this, that have been attacked, abused, dysfunctional families, dysfunctional relationships, betrayals, denials, thefts, loss, set up, attacks, jealousy, hatred, undermining, all kinds of garbage, and and people just wanted to, you know, stop your mission because you're so powerful. Well, if you're so powerful... Then you need to get back on the fence, of, not on the fence, back over the fence and back into the field where you've been like, you know, corralled off into some other little box. You need to jump out of that box and get back into the playing field, the game of life. And, and that, I don't know what that show is, Game of Thrones, if it's any good. I, I don't have any interest in watching these series, you know. I don't know. People seem to think it's a good thing. I don't know if it's good or it's worldly or not. I don't even know what it's about. But, you know, it's kind of a nice title, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Forget about the the stupid series or if it's good or not. I don't know. But let's talk about that as just some power words. The Game of Life, Thrones. You've been you've been given a throne as far as your jurisdiction and authority by the grace of the Holy Spirit, by the power of God. Come on. And, and what he's called and ordained you to do, nobody can do it like you. God does not have a plan C, D, E, F, and G. He has a plan A, and plan A, point one, point two, two, you know, 1.0, 2.0. It's all in the plan A, different volumes, different chapters, different seasons. But God is not changing his mind about what he's called you and me to do, precious one. He's not changing his mind about what... He has given us to achieve and accomplish. He thinks the world of us. We're the apple of his eye. We're the head and not the tail, he told us. Above only and not beneath. We are, you know, the offsprings of Jehovah. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Huh? Yesterday, today, and forever. There's a purebred garment from Africa, and I love it because I'm... Talking Africa the last two days, and I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Europe and everywhere, all over the world. The people in Australia, Africa, Europe, America, South America, all over the islands. I've been on conversations about the islands, you know, the different uh, island nations in, in, the Latin Amer- in the Latin world. And the Lord is opening those doors to us. You know, and, and the, a great apostle spoke and said, you're going to mentor people all over the planet, and many that you'll never even meet in your life online, through the media, through the internet, through media ministry. So this is where it's going, you know. And uh, But boy, that devil, boy, that devil's been busy. I tell you, that devil, he's been busy attacking people, trying to mar their self-image, self-esteem, wound them, make them all isolated, make, make, you f- make people feel all, you know, disengaged and you know rejected and wounded and hurt oh it's garbage you got to get back i've been in prayer the, the last month since the middle of the month now, now i'm not going to stop we, i pray all the time you know the, the bible tells us paul talked about praying without ceasing you know always be praying in the holy ghost building up your most yourself in your most holy faith jude chapter uh, jude, uh, jude uh, is only one chapter jude verse 20 the book of jude is only one chapter one Verse 20, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, so we're always doing that. But, you know, I've been in a special consecration time of prayer these last 32 days now. I'm not stopping. The next month is renewed. July to August, let's go. We went middle of June, middle of July. Now we're middle of July. Let's go August, and we're going to renew it again. Every 30 days, I'm going to renew it. I'm not going to stop. I may never stop until Jesus comes. Or I get to go up in the... Heaven Express, 
supersonic uh, rapture machine. You know, the power of God lifting us up when he decides to come. You know why I say that too? Is because we're not, God is not mad at me. He's not mad at you. Not mad at the righteous. You know, he, you know, he told Abraham, if I found 50 righteous, I wouldn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But there wasn't 50 righteous there. I think he got down to 10 and blew it up. So maybe there was only five. Maybe it was Abraham and his couple of people. And the rest were all wicked. God decided to blow it up. Noah's time. Noah it took 120 years to build the ark. And God said, I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to blow up the world. Start again. I almost want to repent that I made man. He was so grieved and so annoyed. And the Bible said, too, that it, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Don't you see our generation, you know, going uh, into such debauchery and wickedness and perversion and all kinds of stuff? Oh, my God, it's horrible. But you know what? That's the day when revival has to come. And I'm speaking to leaders, okay? I, I don't believe I need 10,000 people, 100,000, 10 million people to be flown with this. Maybe there's 120 like there was in the upper room. Maybe there's a few hundred. Maybe there's a thousand or so. I don't know how many. But, you know, just a group of people that can get together like as, a, as a, an I tribe. You know, we're, we're a tribe together. Some of you trekking with me online here, been watching my broadcast, getting really touched. You know, people say, you're, you, you know, Prophet, you, you are unique. There's no one like you. I, I had people in Dallas, Texas tell me, they said, we've been looking for someone to hear. You know, Kim Clement went to be with the Lord and uh, some other generals have passed and we try to get with this church and this pastor. Now, we don't feel, you know, the spark. But when I listened to you speak, I got switched on. You're the one that we've been looking for. Please, can we follow your ministry and hear you? I'm hearing this everywhere I'm going. And, you know, because of the unique glory that God put upon us, you know, how he made me to look and how he made me to speak and sound and what I'm sharing and and this subject of confidence, listen, is very, very powerful. So I'm coming to you like a papa, like a friend, as a prophet of the Lord, as a success strategist, as a teacher and a mentor and an apostle and a coach to you to begin to... Uh, let me take out the word apostle. I, I don't like to use that title. Anyway, if you ever want to call me that, I just might say, huh, call me Thomas. All right, but you know, something has become apostolic. It's patriarchal, it's trailblazing. You understand? I'm saying in the realm of functionality, but I don't need any titles. You know, I'm a do I have a doctor of divinity. You know, people call me doctor. I am. I function in the office of the prophet for a long time. You call me prophet. That's accurate. It's like calling your pastor a pastor. Instead of calling him by his first name, you call him pastor in his name. That's very, very accurate. There's no aggrandizement of the flesh there or the person. Someone wrote doctor. Thank you very much. You're right. That's true. You know, it's just true. Yeah, what are you? Yeah, of course I am. A guru is a teacher. Go back to reading. Find out what she's about. Oh, see, he's a doctor. Someone's defending me there on the, on this crazy scoping thing. All right. I'm not answering you. Let me, let me. I'm removing the comments. Uh, I'm going to get distracted. I love you. Thank you for being on. And let me. I'm a lover of Jesus Christ. I... I'm a teacher and a prophet of God, his, yeah, and uh, where am I? Wow, somewhere in the world, yeah, you love Jesus too, I love you too, I love him too, we love him together. Okay, so this thing about confidence is magnanimous. If you don't, now here's what I wrote down, I wrote this down in my notes and I may share my notes in another volume of this, but I don't know if I'll get to it right now. But uh, if I start reading, you know, I've got so many things I've written that I've been dictating the last couple of hours on this subject of confidence. Now, uh, one thing confidence does is it gets you riled up. You know, the R-I-L-E-D, you know, gets you rallied up. R-A-L-L-I-E-D, gets you pumped up. P-U-M-P-E-D. It gets you fired up. F-I-R-E-D. It gets you passionate, you know, strong to rise up and to begin to say, I know I can do this because I have the strength from God. And, you know, <laughs> there's it, nothing that I can't achieve with him. And Jesus said it so clearly, without me, you could do nothing. But with me, all things are possible. You know, Paul said, the Apostle Paul wrote, with God, all things are, are, are with man, things can be seem impossible, but with God, all things are possible. 
So we coined a little phrase on that. I, I want to say all things are him possible. Not impossible with man, impossible with him. Him possible. All things possible. You got to feel it, though. You got to feel it. You got to feel it. You know, when you listen to someone, you know if they're an amateur or, or a pro, professional. You, you know if, they're, if they got it going on, so to speak, or they don't, you know. But that gets made from the inner sense. You have to have that inner passion in you. And you have to solidify and strengthen your mind and your imagination to the point where you just know that you can achieve what you step out to do. Wow. Let me read the definition of confidence. It's the state of feeling certain about the truth of something or someone. It's the state of, don't mind my glasses, like, you know, it's just, it's just uh, the notes here that I'm reading. Okay, there you go, you can see it, I think. Okay. It's also a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one one's own abilities or qualities. Well, that fan was loud. I hope it wasn't interfering with my sound. I turned it off. The state of feeling certain about the truth of something. It's also a feeling of self-assurance. You know, you're assured in yourself. But please let's understand this doctrinally, spiritually, Christian-like, likewise, that it all came from God. A feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities or qualities. It's in you from God, and now it's switched on and activated, and you are moving toward the vision and the mission that God has ordained. Very powerful. Thank you, Lord. The scripture also talks about boldness. He said, the righteous are bold as a lion. What's the premise there and the preface for the boldness and the courage? You know what it is? It's righteousness. Righteous is also to mean, meant to mean in right standing. In right standing. Let me do something spontaneous here. I want to look up the word righteous. One second. I'll get it. Right. Yes, there it is. Not the righteous brothers. I don't want that. Oh, oh righteous. Okay. Righteous, a, a definition is of a person or conduct morally right or justifiable and virtuous. Morally right and justifiable and virtuous. That's okay. I'm looking for something else. Also, very good and excellent is another definition. It's an informal definition. Very good and excellent. Like you say, hey, that's righteous uh, cheesecake you made there. It's righteous, you know. It's, it's excellent and very good. <laughs> Something that's very good just can't be denied, you know. Okay, a definition of righteous. At another one from the Merriam-Webster dictionary is telling me it means to be righteous means to be acting in accord with divine or moral law free from guilt or, or sin free from the guilt of sin or guilt or sin this is powerful now you know when you're feeling like that okay when you're feeling like that you're going to be like um Feeling very confident because you're you're right. You know when you're right, you're right. You know, and you just feel it. You feel it. You it it has a feeling. It has a it has a, a life force to it. Here's another thing that the devil tries to do. You you get wounded by situations of betrayals and adversities and attacks, and then your trust in what you were doing gets, you know, marred and messed up and moved about. And then you um, lose trust in certain people, situations, and you lose your confidence maybe in yourself because you, you have this lamented regret of mistakes that you made. 
by trusting the wrong people. All loss comes from trusting the wrong people. That's where it comes from. And uh, being in the wrong environments and situations. And the devil will work overtime to try to get you like that. You know, And it may not take just a five minute, it may not be a five minute episode. It might be something that goes on for a while. But the strategy, oh, I'm praying for you. Shady one, you did that your whole life. Oh, come on now. Come out of it. Whoever you are, bless your heart. Yeah, I, I tell you, this is an anointing for deliverance. I was on the phone with one of my dear friends, another a great uh, kingdom strategist, really, a really gifted, gifted man of God, who does a lot of things uh, with technical things and all that. He's, we're helping each other with something. And, and, and the power of God fell when I was speaking to him. And I began to feel this, and he heard these words, time and territory. I thought, yeah. And I was hearing the word confidence and boldness and, and you know, deliverance, you know, to help break people out of. There's an anointing, there's an anointing coming to help break people out of all of the mess that, that's really sidelined them. Now, you take that attack that came against you, and couple it together and combine it together with some rejection from other people in an environment that you're in where you're like maybe just barely tolerated, but very overlooked, not celebrated. You're not in the mix of the pudding, the mix of the cake, so to speak. And then you feel like a jerk because why am I here and why, you know, people don't. And meanwhile, you're the, you're like, to to some people in the world, you're the greatest thing that ever walked. You, you, you're the answer to their problem. You're, you're a solution bearer to their need and want in life. You're a a vessel of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Don't let anybody belittle you you in that. Somebody else may have a different stream or way of flowing than you do. That doesn't invalidate yours and yours doesn't invalidate theirs. In the kingdom, there's not this or that. There's this and that. You could have two people doing two different things, both anointed by God, both valid, but very different than each other. So here's the greatness that you carry. It's your uniqueness, not your similarity to someone else. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be like, just like everybody else. You want to stand out on your own and who you are, who God's made you, the gift he's given you. And you want to solve the problems for people that God's given you to solve. You want to be the world shaker and the history maker. You want to be the problem solver. You want to be the one that causes things to go into motion because of the gift and talent that God's placed upon you and the treasure he's put in you, the earth, his, his earthen vessel. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost, a treasure that from heaven put in the earthen vessel. That's you. That's me. That's us. And you know what? Uh, it, it's the enemy that wants to keep all of that from flowing, flowing, you know, in. OK. So let's pray. Father, thank you. For your power right now coming to my friend. This is just a little opener here. I'm going to continue in this. Wow. And I wrote some things. I'm going to make another book out of this. You know how many books I'm writing? You know, it seems like every day I start another one. Just by revelation. Because what God says to me is so powerful for so many multitudes of people. The word has to get out. So that's coming. We're developing this thing. It's going to go. It's going to get bigger and better and greater. And more and beyond and more technically excellent and, and all of these things that we're going to be bringing out to millions of people. Uh, hey Amen. I could talk. I, I just almost was going to go back for a minute and talk about where we've been. I've been all over the world on all six continents of the world. 32 countries now. Spoken cumulatively to millions of people. I've personally prophesied over like more than 60,000 people, 50 or 60,000 people. I stopped counting then. It could be 80,000. I don't know. One by one, laying hands on people, prophesying, not just bless you, bless you, new car. (laughs) I wouldn't say that. You know, unlocking your destiny. You're blessed. God's given you the spirit of wisdom. And next, no, I mean detailed prophetic ministry to tens of thousands of people. I lost count. Some, some years ago, and I never tried to count again. One time years ago, I asked the Lord, I wonder how many people, are, I just wonder, I wonder how many people I've actually prophesied to. And the Holy Spirit yelled out the number, the exact number in the thousands. Thousands, how many thousands it was, comma, da-da-da, exactly the number of people. I was like, ooh, 
you have it that ready in your mind. I, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. Then I got to a certain point, more than 50,000, 60,000. I thought, uh, I don't want to count. Don't want to be the numbers, uh, the numbers counting guy. Amen on that. But, you know, it's, it's countless. You know, it's beyond uh, how many we can add up anymore. And that's great. And I'm trying to find our archives for prophecies we have for many cities and cities that, you know, the Lord wants to take me to. We need to go to and minister there and bring the word of the Lord to those regions as well as, you know, thousands and multitudes of people. So, um, but what, what I, what I want to say with that point is this. Where we've been is great, but where we're going is greater. The Bible said the latter house will be greater than the former house. And where we're going is much further along on the road of life than where we've been. The new season is here. The new season is coming. The treasure and the wealth is coming into our hands to do what God wants us to do to advance his kingdom around the planet Earth. And we are going to see uh, the greatest move of God yet. Now, that, that's why I've been in, in this time of consecration. And I've been teaching upon the subject of intimacy and all the intimacy with God is your greatest priority. It is. But it's that that when you get connected back with God very close, all of your confidence comes back. Your self-esteem issues get healed. Your insecurities fly away. Your lack of personal you know, resolve and confidence and assurance in who God's made you and what he wants you to accomplish, even about yourself, begins to go. You, you can make mistakes. Get, or people can just attack you. And you feel like, oh my God, you know, and you feel like you're just messed and lost. You know, the Lord's, I want to say this again. The Lord spoke to me about how many multitudes have multiplied thousands of people, even beyond that, are in need of this prayer of deliverance. To break them out of everything. You, you may have gone through a divorce, messed you up. You may have gone through a business failure, messed you up. You may have had attacks against your ministry and your name, messed you up. Might have been, you might have been stolen from, messed you up. You might have been betrayed by uh, close friends, messed you up. And all of these things, and it begins to knock you off the path if you let it. And then you feel bad of the fact that you allowed it to happen and you were lost for a little bit of a time. You know, like Rip Van Winkle went to sleep and woke up 20 years later and said, where am I at? You know, that's an old fairy tale, but fable, but... You know, someone might have went to sleep, not I mean sleep physically, but for a while on the call of God and the vision, the business, the thing that you want to do, whatever it is you want to achieve and do in your life. And, and, and you need to get up now. You need to get up now. I'm praying the spirit of boldness comes upon you, the confidence, the fire of heaven. I mean, beyond what you can even imagine or ask or think. I'm praying and declaring right now that the power of God is coming upon you, my friend, to just make you abs an absolute warrior for Jesus, invincible, unstoppable, impenetrable, and full of that resolve of self-confidence. It comes by the impartation of the Holy Spirit. It also comes by you getting back your assurance, as I was talking about here, a definition of confidence, and you getting that resolve back about your calling, because when you're called to something and you're not functioning in it, you're miserable. And you can't stay like that. It doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter even what mistake anybody made or you made or whoever or what any devil did or evil people. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. A setback is for a comeback. You need to rise up now and get back your stuff. Get back your, your passion, your, your wherewithal the movement of God in your life. And I'm praying and prophesying that it's happening right now. I will, I will continue in this. I'm feeling the Spirit of the Lord just uh, telling me that there's, a, there's, there's an anointing coming to bring you into that place where God's ordained you to be. Lift your hand and say, Hallelujah, Amen, I receive it, if that's you. Yes, it is, in Jesus' name. All right, I wanted to tell you also about a book that I've mentioned before, but I have this book ready to send to anyone in the North American continent, The Benefits of Excellence. You can get it by, from our website as you become a partner in sowing a seed into our ministry, into this anointing, and also a, a, um, 
a, a great teaching I did that we have on DVD called The Power to Create Wealth. I did this in a great conference with thousands of people in attendance. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal message. And the, the substance of, of, of excellent revelation from heaven that will change your life is in this book and on this DVD. And there's so many more coming. I'm working on many other books that are coming out of the shoot that we have, we have in the uh, pre preparative stages, preparation stages, and they're about to come out. And, and uh, so it's so exciting what's happening. But I'm praying for you that you get your confidence back. You get your boldness back. You get courageous. You have the, you, you have the reassurance again of the victor living inside of you. The power of the Almighty God, your sword, your shield, your, 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 your armament, your, your, your battle array, your people, your connections, and all that God wants you to have to be flowing and operating in exactly what he's ordained you to do, that you won't lose another minute in any way, shape, or form for the purpose of your destiny being fulfilled in Jesus' name. Father, let it be thus and so as I've spoken. I'll see you on the next broadcast. I'm Thomas Marathon the Ford. Love you much. Look forward to seeing you on the next broadcast. Love you, love you, love you. Praying for you. Remember the words of our great, beloved uh, ancestor, the prophet Isaiah, our kingdom ancestor. Where he said in Isaiah 48, 17, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. Everything you're doing should be multiplying and profitable. If it's not, it's the wrong thing. If you've been in some, a place for a while and things haven't gelled, it's time for, the, you know, for you to take assessment and look at everything and begin to ask yourself questions and begin to ask the Lord questions. That's why I've been talking about this, this thing of intimacy. You need to be very, very close with God let the Holy Spirit touch you. I'm praying the fire of heaven will come upon you, my precious friend, and just give you an epiphany, a visitation from heaven, a new personal experience with the Holy Spirit that will give you such confidence and boldness and empowerment to fulfill that great mission that God has ordained you and me to fulfill in this planet Earth. In Jesus' name. Thank you for being my partner I love you much, and when you're sowing a seed, again, remember to ask for the benefits of excellence and the power to create wealth. They will absolutely revolutionize your life. And I'm excited uh, that we're connecting together in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you. He's great, and his mercy endures forever. And just believe God. Pray a John, one, uh, 1 John 1 and 9 prayer. Lord, cleanse me from everything that happened before. Everything. Whatever it was that came against you, it's annihilated. Whatever it is that made you unsure of anything, it's annihilated. Whatever it is that broke your trust in people, it's annihilated. Whatever it is that caused you bitterness and harm, it's annihilated in Jesus' name. Broken and destroyed and cast off of you. Whatever it is, that betrayal, that problem, that setback that made you feel wounded and hurt. No, that's not the will of God. The Lord wants you to be whole, happy, joyful, loving, compassionate, and in, 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 a, in the posture and position of victory and confident excellence and courageous, victorious, positive, proof-producing, positivity and power that you can achieve all that he has ordained for you to achieve and to have all that he wants you to have. I pray financially that God begins to just begin to show you favor and money begins to come. As you're sowing into this anointing, the Lord will begin to bless you back with great harvest and great new open doors. I've seen it around the world. Anyone that's connected with me in this grace the Lord has begun to expand their life, their ministry, their business, their family, their career. They've been upgraded. New things have begun to happen for them. The clouds disappeared and the sun came out over them again and they feel like a new freedom and liberty. And it's just a very, very powerful, unique and anointed thing that God is doing through us in, our, in this ministry. So uh, very smart for you to connect. See you on the next broadcast. Love you, praying for you. And remember this. God has already given you the victory. 
He sets you up for the miraculous. Now, walk in confidence and boldness with an aggressive, an aggressive attitude. Not arrogant. I'm not talking about that. Prideful worldliness. No, that's a different thing. I'm talking about boldness and confidence in God. That you be saying, Lord, I'm walking toward what you said. Remember in Isaiah 45, 11, he said, concerning the work of my hands, command you me. Concerning my sons, people on the earth, humanity, ask me what I'm, what I'm going to do. And concerning the work of my hands, you command me. Imagine that's a place where God... So when we, got it, when we have to pray sometimes very strong and say, Lord, now listen, now God, hey, Lord, I worship you. I fall down on my face and reverence you. I fear you. I reverence you. And, and at the same time, I need this to happen. This must happen. I am commanding it. And then remind the Lord of his word. That's very respectful, isn't it? Because he said it. And you, you're also proving that you have confidence and assurance in what he said and trust in what he said. Concerning the work of my hands, you command me. So, Father, we command wealth, health, healing, connections, right people, right situations, and the great, great resolve of power, of faith, of boldness and confidence to be just flooding through our being that we can rise up and walk and take the territory and all of the victories that you want us to have in Jesus' name. And that is the will of God, only victory. He, he didn't ordain setbacks and devils to hurt you. He didn't ordain trouble for you. He ordained victory for you. On this earth and in this life. I am Thomas Matthew the Fourth. I'm praying this for you, declaring it. See you on the next broadcast. Love you much. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.